What is up, guys? We are back here with another Phantom Nightmare blister opening today. I know I am tired of Phantom uh, Nightmare as well, but so I went to the store and this is all they had. Actually, you know, the funny thing is the store that I went to usually doesn't have Yu-Gi-Oh products and it had a shitload of these blisters. Um, so that's kind of actually in a way lucky, but I was trying to get the new Speed Duel box and unfortunately they didn't have it. Uh, cause again, that store really doesn't have that many Yu-Gi-Oh product, uh, available because reasons, I guess, I don't know. But, uh, anyways, the giveaway winner, that's right. We are going to, we got the giveaway winner and, uh, the person that won the red eyes, dark dragoon is David Elner. I'll put it in post. So you guys know, uh, who, who, who won it. And I'll also make a post on, on YouTube. So you guys are notified and all that jazz. Congratulations, dude. Thank you for the sub. And then a new giveaway is Stardust Dragon in uh, the quarter century here from the 2022 tins because we just surpassed 225 subscribers, or 825, not 225 uh, subscribers. Um, and yeah, so the, the way the way it works to qualify, right, is you have to have an American address so I can ship it out to you. You have to be, like the video, you have to be publicly subscribed and leave a comment on this on this video uh, just put Stardust Dragon anywhere on that comment, and I will know that you are, you know, interested in the giveaway. Anyway, so go ahead, let's go ahead and open up these Phantom Nightmare, or, uh, yeah, Nightmare. I forgot what the other one was called, Phantom Darkness. When the set first came out, I just, I kept calling this a Phantom Darkness, uh, and now I just actually got used to calling it Phantom Nightmare, so that's good, at least. Walls of the Imperial Tomb, this is a... New horse support. Horse, you know, it, it kind of disappointed. I feel like it, it does have a lot of potential. And then the second wave of support really didn't do much for it. I think it, it's kind of counterintuitive to what Horus is, to be honest. Um, the new Horus card, for example, isn't really that good. It doesn't really fit the theme, in my opinion. But, uh, okay, so Ultra Rare, Raid Raptor, Rising, Rebellion, Falcon. Not the best Ultra Rare. Uh, actually, the best ultra rare kind of swapped. Uh, it used to be the uh, the Poplar, and now it actually is Ubel, so hell yeah. And I do think it has potential to go up even more because, you know, people are hyped for, for the U uh, the new Ubel support of playing Ubel and all that stuff. It definitely is a fan favorite, so hell yeah. Love to see it. Sunset Beat. All right, so... I did order some stuff for the channel as well. Some more OCG stuff. I ordered some Pride and some Unity. Uh, and then some Speed Duel stuff as well. Tournament Pack 5, like I promised. Hell yeah, I'm excited for that one. Uh, and then I might do a poll, because I'm actually... Got a Romalith Rosemary. I don't remember pulling this, actually. This, this might be the first time I'm pulling it. A lot of these super rares, you know, Kanabi says there are no short prints, but a lot of these super rares are actually pretty hard to, to pull. Like, a lot of the Ubel stuff is actually short prints, in my, in my opinion. But I guess I don't really have proof, since I haven't opened up a case or anything substantial to have hard numbers backing it. But I have a hunch, you know? Uh, yeah, so I, I might do a poll, because I'm kind of torn if I should buy, ooh, hell yeah, ultra rare you build the loving defender forever, now I have three, that's awesome, I think you only need, at, like, max two, I think three is overkill in a deck, but definitely more than one, right, I, I think that's the consensus, because it is a really good card, and then you can, I, I'm pretty sure you yeah, you can use this this same card to super poly into another one. Actually, maybe three might not be that bad. Um, but I think the effect is once per turn. So uh, it's still pretty decent because it's I mean, you're super polying and using your opponent's board, essentially. But uh, yeah, maybe three is actually not that bad. Uh, and we're getting new U-Bell support in the next set. And then in I th should be the next uh, Battle of Legends set. So... You bell, you bell players are eating really healthy right right about now. All right, so yeah, I might do a poll because I'm kind of I'm torn because I want to open some more Monsters Revenge, but I also want to open up more Magnificent Mavens because I want to get some more fa uh, yeah Pharaoh rares. Pharaoh rares are definitely one of my favorite rarities. I think they kind of took the place 
as uh, my favorite rarity. It used to be, uh, what is it called? Collector rare, but the side sets aren't that good. So, to, I mean, to be honest, it's not even like something that changed with collector rares necessarily. It's just that the sets that collector rares are in kind of suck on average. So the fair rares, oh, oh yeah, also the fair rares are like the most obscure uh, rarity now. It used to be the starlight rares, but now with the quarter century rares, it's more common, right? Fair rares are still really, really rare uh, comparatively. King of the Ashen City, hell yeah. And then also Magnificent Mavens has like a, a, a lot of really good reprints. Even the sleeves, if you guys have seen the market, <laughs> there's actually a sleeve market. Uh, go to TCG Player and type in Konami Sleeves, and you will see that some of those sleeves are actually money, which is pretty crazy. So Ashend for the Eternity. I wonder if these uh, Ashends are actually going to do anything in the next wave of support here. King of the Ashend City again. Yeah, and I'm rooting for you, you know. I, I have been trashing this, the, uh, the archetype, but if it is good, I mean, I don't really have any qualms against it. Betos or Vetoes or whatever has been going up in value. So uh, some people are anticipating it to go to be, you know, somewhat meta or playable, but I don't know. We just had a bad track record, right? We, we've seen it before. Konami just drops the ball on the second wave of support. And yeah, I'm just going off the track record, man. All right. So five more, five more blisters. All right. Let's see, materialization. I wouldn't mind a quarter century rare, you know? Although, I wonder if it's easier to pull through blisters, because I kind of feel like it is, but I, I've heard stories of people saying that they pulled starlight rares back to back from blisters, you know? And that's starlight rares. Those are more, more hard to come by than the quarter century rares, right? So. Uh, of course, are they telling the truth? Maybe not, but you know that's what I heard. And everything you hear online is absolute gospel, right? Terrors of the After Roots. All right, uh, Sorceress Sebek. Is this uh, actually supporting the when this card? Uh, what does it say? When the when this card or monster this card points to inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can gain that much life points of a player. Gain slight points even during the damage step. You can make each player take a thousand damage. Oh, that's actually pretty decent. You can combine it with um, cursed dragon or, or curse something made cursed. Ooh, I forgot the name. It's like a very old school card that people used to use in burn decks, essentially, where you gain life po or the the uh, the effect where you gain life points makes you lose life points or something like that. Um, all right, so magic specter porcupine. Ooh, come on, man. Once quarter century rare or a nice secret rare would be dope. Vito's or uh, low. Low would be nice, too. Master of Ham. I go in ham mode. Uh, Sunfish. Dark Guardian. Barrier of the Voiceless Voice. Voiceless Voice, man. Ooh, I wonder if it's actually going to do stuff as well. All right, last pack. Let's see. I mean, we're, we already did get... Uh, you bell, so we, you know, it's it's not that bad, but I don't think we got a quarter century rare in here. Uh, we got Mature Chronicle, uh, Coin Brightable. Oh, hey, you know what? There we go, secret rare. Not bad. Goblin Biker Grand Entrance. Not the best one, but I I think it's like seven bucks, so it's not that bad. Actually, now, now that I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think, what is the cheapest secret rare? Ooh, because I think there's not that many. Shoot, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I've been gone away. I've been away, man. Uh, I haven't actually opened up a lot of product recently. So, uh, yeah, I have to re go on TCG Player and regain some knowledge here. Anyways, uh, enter the giveaway, guys. And uh, congratulations to, what's his name? David Elner. I'll, I'll po make a post so you, uh, you're notified. And, yeah, thanks. Catch you guys in the next one.